Yes. If you look at the issues that are taking place uh, in all of the African countries, it, the reason for the failure to deal with those issues are all economic. If those countries truly had control of the economy of those, of those countries, they could make decisions to do something about it. But when your economies are being controlled by, by the multinationals, keep in mind that if you were a British colony, the majority of the multinational companies that are in your country, they are remnants of colonization. They never left at independence. They're still the same ones who are the major employers in your country. If you try to mess with them, they don't pay taxes, majority of them. They're putting money in safe havens. If you try to mess with them, next thing you know, there's instability in your country. Our governments do not have the control economically that they should have of their economies. Their economies are very fragile. Their economies are dependent on outsiders, and hence they don't have true control, which is why I, kept say, I keep saying, we can change African leaders like we change clothes. Nothing is going to change. Until those countries have true, true uh, liberation, economic liberation, nothing is going to change. My brother, I can send you back to Kenya right now, and we will support you to be the next okay. president of Kenya. Not a whole lot is going to change. You're going to make some change, but you're not going to bring the true change that we desire until Kenyans can own the, uh, the development of pillars uh, of that country. Right now, African countries, that is not the case. The outside uh, multinationals who own and drive the economy are not Kenyans. They are not Africans. Wherein lies the problem. And also, if we were to go to countries that have conflicts, if you, have you ever wondered why is it that uh, for a continent that doesn't have a single gun manufacturing plant, we seem to have endless supply of guns? So if you really want to go to the bottom of what is going on in Africa, you need to follow the guns. Look at all the young men. You don't see white people shooting uh, black people in Africa. It's us shooting each other. Why are we shooting each other? Who is giving us the guns? Some, some of these people, they have no shoes. They are wearing torn clothes, and yet they are carrying an MK, uh, an AK-47, and an M16, and they are covered. They have more rounds of ammunition covering them than fabrics of clothes on them. These people who are giving them these guns, they don't even have the decency to give them a pair of shoes and decent clothes. It is a shame. It is a travesty. Let's understand it for what it is. So for you to then spend your energies complaining about this man who's holding a gun and shooting other Africans, yeah, you can complain about him. Yes, he should, not, he should stop doing it. But go back and understand the bigger issue. Back to the issues of the root. Who is creating this carnage? Who is benefiting from this carnage? So until we go to the bottom of that issue, we will always complain about all these soldiers, about all these, these youths who are going around killing today and tomorrow and next year because the fundamentals are not being addressed. And this is the issue I'm going to keep hammering on to say, let's not be thrown a shiny object. And we run after the shiny object when the real issues are in the opposite direction. That is what they have been doing to us. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Yes, we have issues. Yes, we need to do better. But in order for the leaders to, to completely do what they need to do, let's also look at other issues that are keeping the economy from moving forward. Who really owns the economy of each country? Take uh, French, former French colonies. France has military presence in each and every one of those countries. And they can invade those countries without notice if they feel their French interests are being violated. What kind, of, what, kind of, what kind of power do you have as a leader? Your own country, your own citizens, they don't have first right of refusal of all contracts in that country. Public, private, large, small French countries to this day have first right of refusal. What power do you have? Your own natural resources, they have the first right of refusal. Your government gets royalties ranging from 12 to 15 percent. What power do you have? You've given up your finances. You've given up control of your military. You've given up control of your natural resources. What power do you have? What country are you leading? Let's be serious here. Okay. So please, let's wake up. Okay. Let's wake up. And Yes, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the continent and to those who are in the diaspora, that is our mother, Ambassador Dr. Alkana Chombal Kwao, the former 
uh, African Union ambassador to the United States of America. So uh, she's telling her the truth that without honing uh, the means of production, without controlling our uh, resources, and without having economic independence, nothing will change. We can change leaders as we want. We can change leaders even now, every time, but without owning our economy, nothing will change. And that is what is happening right now in the continent of Africa. Many of our resources is not controlled by Africans. Yes, these resources are in Africa, but ask who own these resources? Who own the resources in Congo? Who own resources in our countries? Recently, you heard about Niger, that Niger is a country that has a scarcity of electricity, but has uranium that is powering the European countries. And that is the reality in almost African countries, that we have resources. Ask yourself, why Africa we are importing oil from Arab countries, while we have oil in Nigeria, we have oil in Angola, we have oil in Mozambique, uh, Uganda has discovered oil, so Africa recently has discovered oil, natural gas, but still we are importing oil from uh, Arab countries. Why don't we use our own oil here in the continent of Africa? That is a question that we need to ask, because we are not the owners of these resources. Yes, these resources are in our continent, but are owned by others. So that's why you see there's a big struggle for young people to get jobs. You have seen uh, the issue of xenophobic attack in South Africa. Why? Because uh, we are fighting for scrums. We don't own our, our sources. If we own our sources, we can allow our young men and women to be part, to be in charge and to add value to our sources so no one is ready to give us economic independence what we can do is to find the way to own um, these resources and to attain economic independence that is the only solution for us uh, to survive. So kings and queens, uh, our mother, Dr. Kana Chombol Kwao, has addressed many issues. Um, for instance, the issue of conflicts. Uh, you see uh, that uh, you see Africans without shoes, but they own AK-47. So you can't have money to buy shoes, but you have money to buy uh, AK-47. Who gives these uh, weapons to Africans? So we need to change our mind and we need to share with our young men and women of this continent that uh, we are fighting for nothing. Uh, those who are giving us these weapons, they don't have good plan for our continent. They want uh, us to continue fighting one another. Uh, they have been telling us we are the enemies of each other. Just imagine, for instance, a country such as Congo uh, with all resources, if Congo is at peace, how much money Congolese have made, have to make. Just ask yourself, just imagine if Congo is at peace and Congolese have their own industry for cotton, adding value, uh, manufacturing mobile phones and smartphones, how much money Congolese uh, will make. So look Congo today, people are suffering, people are dying and we are keeping silence. As I speak to you now, Congo is not at ease. Go to Sudan. The same issues. People are dying in Sudan. There's no peace in Sudan. Go to northern Mozambique, the country that has discovered oil. There's no peace. Uh, let us congratulate President Kagame for sending his troops to support um, the Mozambican people to bring peace. Go to the Sahel. The same issues. Go to Northern Nigeria, Boko Haram there, go to the homes of Africa, Al-Shabaab, you see. But why these groups have more arms than the governments? Who own these groups? Who give and sponsor these groups? And for what purpose? That is what Africans we need to ask ourselves. But all in all, uh, we the people of Africa, we need to come together. Of course, you know, those who are fighting, those who are in the bush, they don't listen what we are talking here. Uh, they are busy fighting one another. But 
these are our children these are our people i call all of us to engage uh, with one another when you see somebody uh one your, your friend your children share with them uh, the truth about africa that africa is the richest continent but africa africans can benefit from our resources if we come together what we lack is unity and why, that's why you see we are fighting one another we don't have unity you see for instance you see uh america uh europe they don't interfere one another they are together they formed nato to fight their enemies you see but look at africa we are divided and of course yesterday you heard about the issue of african union uh, suspended the six countries that are uh, not democratic but is it the challenge facing africa i think the challenge is not democratic the challenge is exportations when you see these soldiers you see young people in kenya or elsewhere in the continent of africa demanding changes that is the problems so their problems is to see whether they are involved in in the in african sources so we can fight and suspend a lot of countries as we wish that this is demo and democratic and this is a metal coup but without having a justice in africa nothing will change so and i call also to our headers in the african union to understand the root causes of these calls uh, of and uh, and democratic change uh democratic coup and a constitution coup why this is happening and our leaders of course i know they love europeans more than they love us please 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 where you are uh you are here to serve the people of africa despite the white people they have their own interests they love you so much they have given you uh, maybe uh money wherever they are saving us but all in all we must serve the african first no one will come and save these uh poor people it's you the leader who have given the mandate to serve them please 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 help the people the people need good laws people need safe and clean water the people need uh quality education they need things services quality services that's what the africans needs so uh, when you get power if you become a president a leader please serve the interest of the people so without doing so nothing will will change the people will see you as a betrayer and they will fight ag uh, against you and that is what is happening and those who are sponsoring you also are the ones who are sponsoring groups against you we must understand that so kings and queens ladies and gentlemen let us preach peace in this continent let us preach, preach unity we lack unity in this continent the unity is very very important to us we have been told to think that we are enemies you know uh, you see for instance uh congolese and rwandese leaders two people or one people can contaminate the whole countries so they said you are our enemy and because america or us or uh, wherever europe has telling you that your enemy is someone but we don't judge and think beyond i have been uh sharing my thought on the issue of congo and rwanda when congo uh, said that they are going to build the war between uh congo and rwanda so congolese government is going to build the wall so that the rwandese cannot uh, move from rwanda to congo but we are talking about continental free trade area you see when someone is saying he's going to build the wall at the same time we are talking about continental free trade area how are we going to implement we're talking about free movement of people and goods how are we going to implement while you are going to build the wall okay if congo is going to build the wall to, to Rwanda it means it, it can build the war with Uganda also with Central Africa also you see so what we lack is unity and we have been told to think that our neighbors our 
brothers and sisters are our enemies. Have you seen Rwandans have um, cotton industries? If yes, who own minerals in Congo? Who own resources in Congo? We have to ask yourself a difficult question. So, those who are in political class, please, please, please don't lie to us. We are grown up, we understand the truth. Don't lie on us. We are not the problem. Africans, we are not the problems. We are the victims. So don't think that maybe Rwanda, Uganda, Congo, Burkina Faso, Niger is the problem. Those are not the problems. The problem are those who want to take our resources without paying taxes. Are the ones who want to control us. Those are the problems. Before colonialism, before um, slavery, Africa, we live at peace. We share with others. And that's why when others came to us, we welcomed them, despite they come and conquered us without knowing the intention. But we welcome everyone. If you go to Africa in rural areas, you can understand what I'm, uh, I'm saying here. Africans are very polite people. They love one another. And Africans, they love white people than they love fellow Africans. That's why they love Jesus. That is the truth. So kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us end up with uh, the message from Dr. Kana Chomboli Kwao to our African diaspora. Listen what our mother, Dr. Kana Chomboli Kwao, said to us. Thank you. To the diasporas around the world, my most favorite people in the whole wild world, I know we are the beautiful, intelligent, sophisticated, highly adaptable, and totally indestructible Africans. You are the most hardworking people I know. We can do this. We can unite. We can refuse to continue to, be, to have these shackles of the mind we can unshackle our brains and we can image as the true children of Africa who are committed to take our Africa to her former glory. We can heal ourselves from the mental shackles of slavery and colonization. It takes understanding, it takes appreciation, and it also takes complete utter disgust of the status of the black race on earth. No one can take us out of this conundrum that we find ourselves in but us. And that means you should have a serious conversation. You and I should have a serious conversation with the image in the mirror. That is where the conversation begins and that is where the conversation will end. When you go to the boardroom with a colonized mind, when you go to the boardroom with a mind that is suffering from the legacy of slavery, it doesn't matter how high your leadership role is, garbage in, garbage out. Let's heal thyself. They are not using themselves to destroy us. They are now using us to destroy us. The ones they are going to tap onto to destroy us are those black people who are still suffering from the disease of the legacy of slavery and colonization. We owe it to ourselves to have that camaraderie, the camaraderie that other nationalities and races have. You bring Chinese and white people and black people and Indians and Irish and Jews together, guess what? There's a certain camaraderie. They just kind of drift to each other. They just naturally support each other, you know? They come together because they realize unity is something that's just normal to them. It just kind of happens. They, they don't even have to talk about it. But we struggle with that. We struggle with unity. So the healing starts with you. Believe in yourself. Walk this earth like you own it because you do. Walk this earth like you own it because you do. Don't you ever let anybody make you believe you are inferior to anyone. If, in fact, as a black woman, as a black man, stand up tall. You are the mothers and fathers of humanity. As such, you were the first teachers of humanity, especially you women. You were the first mothers of humanity. You were the fecators 
of humanity. So you need to be put on a tallest pedestal. They will not put you on the pedestal. We will put ourselves on that tall pedestal because that is where we belong. And for you to be powerful and stand tall and get on that pedestal with the confidence that you need, you need knowledge and understanding of your history and what these evil doers have done to us for centuries, but that united we are standing up and, stay and say, enough is enough. No more shall we be disrespected for simply being who we are. United, as children of One Mother Africa, we are going to stand up tall and we will take over ownership of the building of the Africa we want. We will commit to the fact that the building of Africa is our responsibility and ours alone.